1950 World Cup final was a game like no other. An estimated crowd of over 200,000 attended the game in the Maracanã, with Brazil strong favourites to win their first ever World Cup in their own backyard. But their opponents, Uruguay, did not read the script. This is a story of the curious case of the 1950 World Cup final. One of the key reasons that the 1950 World Cup final was so bizarre is that it wasn't actually a final. For the only ever time, the World Cup would be decided entirely by group stages, with the best teams from four groups going into a final stage where the winner would be world champions. The hosts would be Brazil, a side eager to rule the world for the first time. They were the team that had decided on the strange format, but it would come back to haunt them. The World Cup had not been played for 12 years, due to World War II. As a result of Europe being in ruins following the war, the hosting rights were awarded to Brazil. The Maracanã Stadium was constructed in the heart of Rio de Janeiro. The stadium was finished at warp speed. Only 13 out of the 16 teams that were supposed to participate turned up. Brazil's opening game would take place against Mexico. Brazil had won the previous year's Copa America by scoring 46 goals in 8 games, and the nation was in a state of frenzy. Amongst fireworks and flares, they stormed to a 4-0 win over the Mexicans. They drew 2-2 with Switzerland in their next game, but a 2-0 win over Yugoslavia sent them into the final stage. They would be joined by Spain, Sweden and Uruguay. Brazil certainly seemed to be going about things the right way, in their first game of the final stage, they defeated Sweden by 7 goals to 1. This was followed by a 6-1 victory over Spain. Jules Rimet was in sight. Brazil's final game would be against Uruguay. The Uruguayans were in second place and Brazil first, so the game served as a de facto final. Due to France withdrawing, Uruguay only played one game in their initial group stage, an 8-0 win over Bolivia. In the final stage, they had so far recorded a 2-2 draw with Spain and an hour 3-2 win over Sweden. Naturally, the odds were in the Brazilians' favour, and they only needed to draw to become champions of the world. Brazil had netted 21 goals going into the final game, and victory seemed certain. So much so, everyone already began to act as though they had already won. Each Brazilian player had their own gold medal prepared for after the game with their name engraved on it. The mayor of Rio delivered an impassioned speech to the players, who he said in a few hours would be declared world champions, and a song, Brazil the Victors, was composed to be played after the final. Carnivals were held in the streets of Rio in anticipation, and whilst around 173,000 spectators were officially in the American R, it is estimated that the true total of the crowd was around 220,000. Uruguay, however, were not just there to make up the numbers. The first ever world champions were keen to spoil the party. A newspaper was printed on the morning of the final with a picture of the Brazil squad saying, these are world champions. Uruguay captain Obdulio Varela purchased as many copies as possible and laid them on the bathroom floor, encouraging his teammates to spit and urinate on them. In the moments before the game, Uruguay coach Juan Lopez encouraged his team to adopt a defensive approach. However, after he left the room, Varela stood up and said that the coach was wrong, and that they should play with courage, otherwise they would be thrashed just as Spain and Sweden were. The two teams stepped out in front of the frenzied crowd, the first World Cup final in 12 years. The game began as the majority expected, with Brazil relentlessly attacking the Uruguayans. Uruguay just about held the Brazilians out, and the game was nil-nil at half-time, a score good enough for Brazil to be declared champions. And soon into the second half, Brazil had one hand on the trophy. Friassa scored to put Brazil in front. The Maracanã exploded as their dreams were now within touching distance. But as the stadium danced in celebration, Barella took the ball out of the net and went over to argue with the referee. He argued for a long amount of time, and when the dispute eventually ended, the crowd had quietened down. He placed the ball on the centre circle and shouted to his teammates, now it's time to win. Brazil started to suffer stage fright, and Uruguay suddenly took control of the game. In the 66th minute, Uruguay levelled the scores through Juan Schiaffino. Brazil's position was now under threat, and with 10 minutes to go, Alcides Gigia 
slotted the ball underneath Brazilian keeper Barbosa and into the net. The Maracanã fell into a deathly silence as Uruguay took the lead. The silence would remain for the rest of the game, and the shock proved too much for the Brazilians. The full-time whistle was blown, and Uruguay were world champions. A day that should have been one of triumph for Brazil was now one of tragedy. As the Uruguayans paraded the trophy, the stadium remained in a stunned silence, and at least two Brazilians were reported to have killed themselves in the stadium, and many more did the same across the country. Brazilian goalkeeper Moacir Barbosa remained haunted by the defeat for the rest of his life. One time, when he encountered a lady at a shop, she got her son to look at him and said to him, this is the man that made Brazil cry. When Barbosa was presented with the goalposts from the game as a present, he took them home and burned them. The last surviving player from the final was the score of the winning goal, Shizia, who died in 2015, exactly 65 years after his infamous goal broke Brazilian hearts. Meanwhile, in a poverty-struck area of Sao Paulo, a man cried at the defeat. His nine-year-old son came up to him and comforted his father by saying that when he was older, he would win the World Cup for him. The name of this little boy was Pele. Whilst Brazil are now the most successful team in World Cup history, the scars of the Maracanasso have not fully healed. Brazilians still live in fear of the Uruguay team, but without this defeat, a young Pele and many others may never have been inspired. It was a national tragedy for the Brazilians, and although the defeat has certainly been avenged, the stain of it will forever be there on the yellow jersey, behind the five stars. <laughs>